With her shaved head and haunting version of Nothing Compares to You, Sinead O'Connor shot to fame in 1990 with a massive number one hit. One year later, she grabbed the Grammy for Best Alternative Music Album, even though she boycotted the awards that year. But it was her shocking move on Saturday Night Live in 1992, after singing Bob Marley's War, when Sinead tore up a photo of Pope John Paul II and instantaneously destroyed her career. The perception was that that Pope moment on SNL 92 sort of derailed your career. Whereas your take on it, which I thought was interesting, was that's quite the opposite. It was at that moment that you felt like you were re-railing your career. What did you mean by yeah. that? Sinead O'Connor was never meant to be a pop star. <laughs> It was really a protest singer, you know. She says it wasn't a stunt. It was a statement against child abuse. A decade before, the sex abuse scandal in the Catholic Church exploded. The Vatican had no comment. Catholic leaders said her actions deeply wounded people. Ten years after the Pope ripping episode, you all then found out in America that this was going on. We always say Americans, they think nothing happened until they found out about it. <laughs> Nearly two weeks after SNL, Sinead was famously booed off the stage at a Bob Dylan tribute concert. You sort of shouted war over the audience. I think I got halfway through before I almost barfed because I was screaming so loud. Do you think you were the first one sort of canceled? That's a good question. I never thought of that. Probably the first one that everybody was like, okay, that is not having a career now. Yeah, I mean, they were steamrolling your records like within 24 hours. They were literally with bulldozers. Until she apologizes. We've got to say, do not buy a material. She says ripping up the photo of the Pope was a blessing. So that was an awakening that moment when you ripped the Pope up. You were like, oh my gosh. That was you almost yeah, finding exactly. yourself it was, again. It was a blessing because I had to make my living doing the thing I love doing, which is making music live. Sinead says it wasn't just about abuse in the church. The photo of the Pope belonged to Sinead's mother, who abused her for years. Was there something symbolic about that actual picture of the Pope that you tore? That picture I took off my mother's bedroom wall, it was a way of ripping her up as well, I guess, to ripping up my mother, you know. In her new memoir, Rememberings, Sinead reveals chilling details about the abuse and decades of mental health struggles that followed, some playing out very publicly on social media. This is no way for people to be living in... After seeking treatment and rehab, today, Sinead seems to be in a much better place living in a peaceful thatched roof house in a remote area outside of Dublin. As you and I sit here right now, I mean, how do you feel? How are you? No, I'm good, yeah. I've been really good since I moved into this place about a year ago. Yeah, it's real peaceful. Somebody told me that you have uh, anxiety. It's true. I am riddled with it. You no, know it's like it's terrible. I suffer from a condition called complex post-traumatic stress disorder from things that I went through growing up. She also describes in her book being inspired by Muhammad Ali, frightened by Prince, and misunderstood by old blue eyes. What happened was poor Frank Sinatra had been told that, you know, there's this cheeky Irish singer and she hates America. He said something about she should have her ass kicked, and the trouble was I was staying in the same hotel as him. Oh my gosh. And I was thinking, oh my God, my father is going to kill me if I kick the crap out of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> I love Frank Sinatra, obviously, what's not to love? He's amazing. Right. Next year, she'll tour a new album being released this fall. I'm concerned that perhaps I've aged a little too much to be touring. You know, it's a young person's game. No, you're not too old for it. You can do it. I got two words for you. Willie Nelson. Yeah, but, you know, I don't know. He didn't have a radical hysterectomy. <laughs> my soul and spirit are 17 and are certain of it. But my body thinks it's 70. How does that make you feel to see and feel the love of large crowds these days? It's lovely, it's lovely. I like particularly when there are men crying, then I know I did a good job. I really enjoyed my conversation with her. Of course, that song, Nothing Compares to You, written by Prince. We didn't have time in the interview to get into the whole story. It's in the book. The book's out today. She tells us, really, she laughs when she's telling the story, but it's this harrowing th night where Prince invited her over to his house, and so there's that whole thing. Um, it hasn't been an easy road for her with her mental health, but she's doing great. She lives in this house that you saw. It looks like the Keebler elves live there <laughs> outside of Dublin. She's very happy there. She has a simple, boring life. She loves American uh, television. She's yeah. a big uh, murder in the first. She's a huge Tay Diggs fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and she, she does her things every day, put tingles in the garden, maybe yeah. has a smoke, and, and she's doing great. You she's know, writing music, too, Yeah, she's, right? she's got a new record coming out, No Veteran Dies Alone. That's her first record in eight years. She's going to tour. 
Um, and I really just enjoyed my time. She, the book is, an, is a brutally honest uh, account of an extraordinary life. I mean, it's wow. really... Uh, she says she doesn't even remember really writing half of it. Wow. wow. Um, that was revealing, man. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was. It was a lot to do. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.